Hi, I'm Cassidy, and this is Allison. We believe it is time for women to remember. It's time for us to remember who we are and where we came from. Time to reclaim the legacy and the lineage and the history that could only ever be ours. Because it is important to know that feminism is memory. And just so we're all on the same page, Feminism, simply defined, is just the belief in the social, political, and economic equality of the sexes. The reason why we have the term feminism is because presently we have not achieved this equality, not in a single country in the world. And when it comes to equality of the sexes, there are two reigning schools of thought. One is that it's an impossible feat, and it will never be accomplished. And the other is that it's this distant dream, something that we might experience one day in the future. But what we are saying is that it's not just wishful thinking. It is something that has been accomplished and achieved in our past, in our human history. And because it has been done before, it can be done again. This expression, feminism is memory, is a truth that women of Native heritage have long tried to pass on because as Native American writer and poet and activist Paula Gunn Allen once said, the root of oppression is the loss of memory. You know, feminism has been around as long as women have been around. We have known civilizations that have championed the inherent power of women and included that power within the structures and rules and regulations of their society, despite our history books telling us something different or leaving the story out altogether. Yeah, and this is important to us because we are the founders of a feminist media company, and we have spent the last two years traveling the world documenting young female revolutionaries, leaders, and activists. And we can tell you firsthand, the fight for parity can be very frustrating. And one of the best examples of this frustration is how the young women that we documented would share with us how their mothers or the women who came before them had better lives than they did. They had more freedom and more liberties than they do now. And we question, how can this be so? If we look at other human liberation movements, we can recognize linear progress. Decade by decade, laws and rights improving while the social consciousness evolves. But with the women's rights movement, it's the one that stands alone in its cyclical nature of progress. And why is it that we haven't been able to consistently move the needle forward for women? Because patriarchy. It's the system that champions toxic masculinity while diminishing all that's female. And not only does this system seek to diminish the female experience, it aims to remove it from our collective memory. Patriarchy knows no loyalty. Whether you be conservative or liberal, Muslim or Christian, spiritual or atheist from the East or the West, it doesn't matter because we're all operating within this system. Of course, we recognize that some countries and regions are more progressed than others. Shout out to Scandinavia or Canada. But we are all still in this fight. And to be clear, we are not saying that it is men against women. Rather, we are saying it is hyper-masculinity pinned against femininity, and both women and men suffer within the confines of this system. But for women, the oppression does go much further. It's our very femaleness that is hated. Our bodies, our appearance, our nature, and even our souls have been under massive attack. Across the globe to varying standards and degrees, women's bodies are commoditized and thought to be the property of others. From daily instances of sexual assault, to rape, to the lack of access to education, to being paid an unequal wage for equal work, to only being valued as wives and mothers, and in many countries not even being able to choose when we want to be mothers, and not to mention femicide. I mean, how incredulous is it that we have a term in our modern-day lexicon to help explain the mass killing of women for solely being women? This is an epidemic that Alison and I have reported on and documented from Brazil to Turkey. For example, in Brazil, a woman dies every 15 minutes, the hands of her domestic partner. In Turkey, around 1,100 women have died at the hands of men in the past five years. 
I mean, how infuriating is this? It literally makes my blood boil. And on that note, something else we'd like to address is that another thing patriarchy would love for women to forget is that we are fully entitled to the entire spectrum of human emotion. So to our women, let us say this, if you are angry, go ahead and be angry. And to the men who love women, if you're pissed, be pissed, because the appropriate emotional response to the atrocities that women have been enduring for as long as we can remember is anger. It's righteous anger. Yeah, and we acknowledge that anger and protest and action have long existed and still exist. Take these photos. Women protesting in the 1920s and 30s. Women protesting in the 70s and women protesting just last month. You know, all these photos that we sourced are from around the world. And it's sad to see the similarities amongst them from decade to decade to decade. It is our hope and it is our belief that if we can share the knowledge that feminism is memory, it'll help us build upon our successes. It'll help us keep us from fighting the same fight generation after generation because it is our desire to see a time when our daughters don't have the same protest photos. Another way that we can really ensure that progress moves forward is to fully own that we do not have to wait until everyone is comfortable with our activism before we take action. Think about it this way. Imagine any other marginalized people group who've experienced oppression. Would they wait until their oppressor felt comfortable before they move forward? No, it doesn't work that way. The oppressor should feel uncomfortable because they are wrong. The oppressed should feel vindicated and validated. We women don't need permission because we are standing on the shoulders of the women who came before us and who fought for us. We are supported and we are surrounded and we need to keep this at the forefront of our memories. Yes, one of the great feminist psychologists of our time said something to this point. Her name is Clarissa Pinkola Estes, and she said, when a woman is exhorted to be compliant, cooperative, and quiet, to not make upset and go against the old guard, she is pressed into living a most unnatural life. The worldwide issue for women is that under such conditions, they are not only silenced, they are put to sleep. Another way of understanding that is that their memory is erased. As women, we cannot wake up to who we are until we remember who we are. It is this remembering that is the alarm clock, and this alarm is firing for all of us right now, in this very moment. And we acknowledge it is not easy to wake up. Often for women who do, they have to challenge the romantic relationship that they're in, the God they praise to, or the government that they adhere to. The system touches almost everything, and it's very difficult to step outside of it. But the great news is, is that waking up is a total game changer. There is this proverb that declares, be sure and know the truth will find you out. That's the proverb, or you can borrow from what Gloria Steinem said, which is, the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. Let the resonance of this just linger in your being for a moment. Because what this is saying is that what is true indeed can never be permanently unknown. So what that is saying is that the truth about women can be unleashed. You know the saying, only the strong will survive? How often do we hear this? It is a, sta it is a statement that speaks to the resilience, the power of resilience, tenacity, and endurance. We women of the here and now, we are the impossibly strong. We are the revolutionary daughters of women who have survived thousands of years of systemic shutdown, thousands of years of patriarchy trying to not only keep them silent, but keep them asleep. Women are a people whose time has come. It is time for us to be seen as equal, it is time for us to be recognized as the powerful and dynamic beings that we are. And it is absolutely our time to be remembered. Thank you. Thank you.